my early dismissal is gonna is causing all kinds of traffic on my road it's gonna snow again no need to worry I got my snow blower it's all ready to go pulled the truck out got the garage all cleaned up swept about 20 ish pounds of junk on the floor out and so back, just backed her in because um well because i don't want it outside without the bed on it if i can help it but anyway it is time to do a little oh let me get my pen a little crossing off here this this is a big one right here rear frame done oh my god that feels so good to do that change rear end oil done yeah yeah, that's all done. Only thing left on here is rebuild drive shaft, rear transfer case seal, bed repairs. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> that was a big one though. This one right here was huge, so I'm glad that's over with. Um, I think what I'll do, so right now I've got, James got a new, I mean, I'm sure everybody who's, you know, most people who are watching this video probably already know. James got a new Dodge Stealth. 91 she's sweet but we need to pull the tranny and rebuild it in a motor the motor's fine but the transmission needs some loving but um so he's gonna he's gonna pull that out as soon as he can now that now that betsy's uh mobile here i can um i we can we can get that in the garage but i think in the meantime because he's not here this week um so in the meantime i might pick on the drive shaft and the transfer case seal see if I can get those um, fixed up I also ordered uh, two more u-bolts uh, for the leaf springs before I before I go repairing those I only have two right now so I'm gonna get I, I gotta replace them all so I'm gonna get them all as soon as they come in then I can redo those I also got some end seals for the uh, for the axles for the rear drive for the rear axle here I got some end seals because I'm pretty sure that one over there was leaking when I um, when I had the brakes out it was either well it was one side was leaking pretty bad and one side was just kind of seeping out a bit so I've got to fix those um, too I think but um, yeah I got some U joints and some more seals on order so I might be able to get a little work in on this before James pulls his stealth in one more thing while I'm out here at it, I got a new home for my for my shop press. Check that out. Put it right next to the compressor. It's kind of behind the trash can and the engine hoist. I, I need the engine hoist to pull the bed out uh, onto the onto the truck. But yeah, there she sits, man. It's a good hydraulic wonder. Pulled the drive shaft out. Let's see, got my little oil pan in there. Not much came out of there because I think maybe a lot of oil is missing out of that transfer case. Popped all the little worms off of uh, off of the um, drive shaft U-joints here and um, I got I got the the rear one off completely. The front one I got um, the yoke off of this side and I've got it set up in the press. This is how I did it and this is exactly what I was talking about as far as like you know needing a foot pedal for the shop presses because you know I have to hold this drive shaft kind of like up you know level with the if you can imagine like it's level with with the with the with the press so it has to be kind of like this way you know so I'm holding it out here and like pressing on it with my foot but I got the yoke out here and I'm just pressing the final little bits out I'm going to get some of this on video see if you can There it is. That simple. Easy enough. I would I would let that loose, but then the yoke would fall on everything. So yeah, I'm just just rebuilding the drive shaft. I got new U joints for it and everything, so should be good to go as far as that's concerned. Let's see if I can get a shot of this. So like I'm holding it out here. It's lined up in the in the press and everything. Last time, the, the other side when I did this, the thing popped and like shook the whole pl uh, plates and everything. Let's see. See if I can. I'm gonna back off on that one. Okay, I cut that short because it was freaking terrifying. Like when when these things let loose, it's a big like you could tell the the press is like 
getting down to like full force because it's like it, instead of like being really fast it slows down like da, 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 and i'm just barely pushing any and then just all of a sudden just like, bam and the whole the bottom plate pops up and i mean it's it's something else to see but i i couldn't capture it because man i needed both hands to hold this thing and i didn't want to fall over and it's uh, it's pretty terrifying anyway i got this i got these all cleaned out i got all the little plastic schmoo out of the um out of the um rings there so that uh the new ones will go in nice and easy this just needs to be cleaned up and um painted a little upgrade to my shop vise <clears throat> i always used to have this thing attached to the table with these uh clamps and the reason for that is that i don't know i, I need to move it around every once in a while just so i can get a, a good angle on it or whatever but um you know this table is really nice it's got this angle iron under here for the ledge and it's got a nice thick top on it and everything like that i love it and i I've, i usually use it in the corner so i figured i'd just fix it to the side here real solid so that i could bend big stuff or hammer on big stuff and you know because i ended up cracking this damn thing in my in my press it's it's I don't know if I can show, get this on camera or not, but there's a crack right there. Yeah, yeah, you can kind of see it. Uh, I did that by trying to install the U joint in the uh, in the shop press, and it's just unfortunate. I might have to buy a new drive shaft here. <laughs> I mean, it is cracked and everything. The thing about it is not cracked all the way through. I think. No, it is cracked all the way through, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's cracked all the way through. But this is such a tiny little thing that holds the um that holds the uh U-joint end cap in place so that it can kind of spin around. I'm just wondering if I can weld this closed right here and keep it from, you know, breaking the rest of the way. I mean, it's not cracked on that side. Um, but it's probably weekend. I, I, I'm going to probably end up having to get a new drive shaft. But in the meantime, I will weld this thing um, closed. I did manage to bend it back to normal. Um, and because it, yeah, because it's cracked all the way through, this uh, the end cap will will fit in here, and it goes all the way up to where you know it needs to. And I already aligned it with the U-joint in there and the other cap so that I know that they align um, properly. So, oh, it kind of sucks. I got the, I got the drive shaft painted blue and um, was trying to put the U-joints in them with my press and I guess maybe that was a bad idea or I'm just getting used to it. It's a live and learn kind of thing, you know? I'm trying to learn how to use the tool but, you know, in order to use it, I guess I got to fail a couple times. Anyway, that's, that's where I'm at with this. Mm, don't look too bad. I think that'll work. Oh, focus. Focus. Yeah. It'll work. I have to keep it away from the center in the in the on the inside there, so that the yoke or the U joint has enough room to kind of come through and work. But <clears throat> yeah, I think that'll work. This drive shaft is a complete loss. I'm pretty sure I need to get a new one. I I, I couldn't bend them to get a in line enough, I guess, or straighten enough on this tab. <clears throat> I'm able to get a U-joint in there, and it's nice and smooth and everything like that, but I can't fit the keeper in in order to get, like, to make, to keep this cap from, you know, flying off <laughs> when it's under load and stuff like that. So I just tacked it in place. This is going to be a temporary drive shaft just to get it in and out of the garage for now. I need to get a new one. Uh, it's unfortunate, but... I just got to keep on working on it, you know, just keep trucking forward. And uh, it's it's no big deal. I'm more upset that, um, yeah, myself about screwing it up, but eh, live and learn.
Final thoughts on my shitty drive shaft. It uh, seems to work just fine. We did a little testing with it last night. And um, yeah, she'll, she'll make some smoke. So uh, I, I'm not too worried about it. I, I don't think that, um, I'm not sure actually if, if I can even use that same length drive shaft for when I put a uh, manual transmission in it. So that'll probably have to be replaced when I do that anyway. I think the manual transmission has a different transfer case and all that other stuff. So I'll just deal with that one. I'll deal with that drive shaft when the transmission, uh, when the new transmission comes in. So enough about my shitty drive shaft. It seems to be working fine. It'll work fine enough until, <laughs> until I get something uh, better in the transmission area. And moving on to my springs. And I can't, I'm, I'm going to, um, I've got a new uh, pair of U-bolts coming in at some point this week. I was kind of hoping it'll be today, but <clears throat> at this point now, I'm not even sure <laughs> if that really even matters. This spring looks fine right here. It's all attached and everything, and it's all good to go as far as I can tell. This one, I can't even believe I didn't notice this until now, but this rear shackle is cracked right there. Got a big old crack right there. I'm not actually sure if I can fix that or not. I mean, I can weld it together, and it'll probably work, but I'm not actually sure. When you put heat to springs, they lose their springiness. I don't think I will be putting too much heat to it, only on the end here. Still, I'm not sure if I can fix that or not. So I'm going to have to think about that. But um, yeah, I, I got to at least pull it off and see what's going on and see if I can maybe fix it. I'm not sure. We'll see. Okay, there was one more thing on here, and I, I know I've been talking about it already, but the leaf spring bushings is, is actually on the list. I did just missed it before. I just, I, I just double-checked it. There's bed repair and leaf spring bushings and bed repairs. And so I'm out here trying to do the leaf springs, and basically um, this is like the final installation of my uh, energy. Come on, Bouncy. Uh, my energy suspension um, uh, hyperflex system. These bushings in here, these two bushings on the rear shackle, and then there's one bushing on the front shackle that also needs to be replaced. I'm um, getting the bolts out now, we're trying. And on this one, you have to take the bottom one out first because the, the top one is locked in kind of like, but you have to take this, this one out first. But this bolt won't come out. I've got the nut off but I can't get any headway on that bolt head, like moving outwards, you know? I've tried the Astro Pneumatic out on it, I got my hammer out on it, I've tried little, little, you know, little clamps and shit, I just can't, get, it won't budge, it's, it's kind of like rusted into the rubber bushing part itself, so I'm gonna have to cut it out with um, my, uh, my Sawzall basically, my DeWalt version of a Sawzall. But I should be able to get that and I've already got it kind of propped up here. You can see I've got the rear lifted up, um, supported on the frame, enough to where the leaf springs are, you know, they're off of the axle right now. So they're, you know, they're ready to come out. I just need to pull that out, press the old bushings out, press the new bushings out, press, press new bushings in, clean all this shit up and throw it back together. So hopefully I'll get this side. Um, you know, soon, very soon, like tonight or tomorrow or whatever. This other side, I decided I'm going to have to, I, I ordered a new spring because I am not going to re-weld something that supports the weird weight of my truck and trust it. I, not, not like this. This is like a single point of fail. If this crap, I've had a spring break on me before and it is, is dangerous. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I'm just, I ordered one and it should be in, in a week. So I'll be able to get to that one um, when the port comes in. Using all my big tools for this one. This is what I'm talking about. Pressing the bushing out of this leaf spring. I've got my engine hoist out here holding the butt end of it because these things weigh about, I don't know, maybe 50 pounds. 
I still have to use both my hands to, you know, work this thing because I don't want the spring to fall when it pushes it through. But yeah, it's coming out. I got one side out. At least the uh, rubber bushing part. Ooh, she's empty. I think that that sleeve right here, this this metal sleeve inside, that needs to come out too. But I'll get that next. After this one. Got everything cleaned up, painted, assembled, ready to go. Um, you know, same kind of color scheme. These are a little different though. I went with red on the U-bolts. I don't know. I think it'll look pretty cool. These um, these bushings fit really nice. I didn't have to modify them at all to get them to work right. And they're in there perfect. And, you know, I think the reason they went in there nice is because, yeah, the control arms on my, on my... When I did it on the control arms, I think they were just a little messed up. Anyway, these went in real smooth. Gloss black on the spring. Uh, the rest of it is... Good to go. This is should be dry-ish. If it's not dry, it'll be dry very soon. Um, but I got it painted, you know, all underneath there and cleaned up and everything. So she's uh, she's ready to put back on. <clears throat> Just finished reinstalling everything. It came out really good. Move the rear shackle. U-bolts on there, got the front shackle, everything bolted in, that looks good, yeah, I'm happy with the way it came out, one side done, one to go, just waiting on a spring, got this in the mail today, it's my new spring, it looks good, I just uh, unwrapped it and just Took a look at it. it. It's fine. It's the right one. Uh, I'm gonna take the old. Well, they're not old bushings. I'm gonna take these new bushings out. I've got my my hoist out here. I set it up in the uh, leaf spring bushing removal system that I had set up before, and just uh, set the new energy suspension ones in. Here's my little setup. Small extension sock uh, on a upside down socket, pushing a bushing out on my 20 ton shot press. Action! Sweet. Just bombed it out. But the bushing. bottomed out too <laughs> just got done cleaning up all the hardware that I'll need to put this spring back on this is the top bracket that um, goes on top of the spring and kind of actually this way and it guides the u-bolts to kind of stay in place over top of the center nut on the spring this one's the rear shackle and it's in pretty good shape not not bad at all um, that cleaned up nicely this one is is the bottom is the bottom U-bolt bracket assembly. It kind of holds the U-bolts up against the axle. It's a whole bracket assembly. It's in terrible shape. You can see right here, you can see it's so it got so this was so rusted out that it's very weak on this corner here. This inside edge right here. Right there. Too. You can see a little hole in the side there, and just in general in this whole area. Now, I, I, the rest of it is pretty thick and solid though, so it's only these couple places that are weak. Even on this side is fine. It's nice and thick still. So I'm gonna, I have to repair this before I get any paint on it. But I got it all cleaned up, all of the rust out of it and off of it, as much as I could. And, uh, yeah, I just need to weld a little bit and make this a little, just add a little bit more metal. I guess that's, that's my, that's my plan. Add metal. Should work. It's first snow tracks. Nice. She's all done. She's completely restored in the rear end here. 
the frame, gas tank, it's got new shocks, cleaned off the rear end, refilled it, re-lubed it, got a new cup, got a new paint on the cover up there, new spring on this side, this is the last thing I did, and that looks good, oh my god, it's in there, nice. The other side was already done the other day, but man, look at this thing. It just, it looks so cool like this. It really just looks pretty freaking cool like this. James was out here the other day. He's like, man, that looks like a brand new gas tank. Yeah, it kind of does. I just painted it up though. That's all. Let's get the rust off of it, paint it. Looks good. It's good to go. Oh my God, just, just look at it. That'll be the view from people behind me. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Time to put the bed on and get this thing inspected. And I just pulled out all the crap that you need to hook the fuel tank up to the filler, right? It's all the filler stuff. This stuff is just totally wrecked. I mean, this, thing attaches to the bed side and the bolts are like frozen in there I gotta get them out one one tab is broken on there I don't know if I can fix that or if I really even need to the other one the other thing about it is like this this vent hose right here is so it's just it's so solid it's just rock solid man the thing is hard as a rock so I've got a piece of hose that I can replace that with and then this thing the actual filler neck itself is look at this rust, man. Ah, oh, it's just disgusting. So I gotta clean this up before I put the bed on. I can't put that back in the truck. Not like that, man. Not like that. Got the hoist out. Put the bed up on it. James and his buddies are helping me move it and put it on the truck. Look at that. Oh, it's swinging. It's swinging. But she set out here. Ready to go on. Oh my god, that's, that's freaking beautiful. Yeah, the jack crapped out, or the, I'm sorry, the hoist crapped out just at the perfect timing. <sighs> it won't lift pretty much any higher than that, so we had to take the wheels off. Got it up on jack stands in the back here. Should be able to have enough clearance to slide it up on over and get it onto the frame from here uh, without the tires on. So we'll see. We'll see. It's almost there. She's on the frame. Look at that. Oh my God. Oh my God. Isn't she beautiful? Nick came over. He got this SRT4. I want to say, come on, give, give me the two step. It's a balmy 54 degrees, late January in Pennsylvania. There's silver turd up there. Look at this thing. Look at it. It's a freaking truck again. Oh my God. The bumper's on. The tailgate's on. Oh. It looks good. And uh, I've got a few things to sort out before I get it inspected. No filler. I did clean this all up though and get it uh, ready to go in. This tube is in terrible shape. And, uh, it cleaned up nice though. There was a couple of holes that I needed to fill in there and on that side too. Looks fine though. It's solid again. Uh, I still got to clean up that plastic piece but uh, really the thing that I was um, uh, kind of bums me out here is that a few days ago I started noticing that it was like backfiring and I needed to raise the idle again just like I had to before when one cylinder was down looked into it sure enough same damn cylinder is down and the problem I, I know I've shown this before and you see that blue one spark plug wire going down there it's like when it's attached to the to the um, spark plug it's also kind of resting right up against the header and so that is no good that uh, I tried 
You can see here the, with the blue wire, I tried just taking a universal wire that I had um, in the workshop and, I, and I, I tried putting it on there, but it still, it won't fire it. I think that plug is just damaged or broken or whatever. And so I need a new set of plugs and a new set of wires basically um, because I will not pass emissions with running on seven cylinders. The permanent fix for this, I'm hoping, is a shorter set of um, spark plugs. They make some that are designed to be shorter and so that your plugs are farther away from the headers, you know? Because I've got really, really cl uh, close, tight, shorty headers on this thing. And um, it's just constantly interfering with that rear one back there. So I'm going to try and get shorter plugs, basically, so the length that sticks out from the head this way... Um, is shorter so that the plugs don't burn on the burn or interfere with the headers at all The other thing that I need to fix up that I'm pretty sure won't pass an emissions test is there's an exhaust leak on that Rear header. I'm gonna see if I can zoom in real close on this. Yeah, you see that black mark right on the The rusty bit there. That's the header. It's leaking right where the pipe is welded to the flange I always thought that it was leaking underneath of it on the gasket surface, but I'm going to I'm going to pull that out and and reweld that pipe to the flange and see uh, what kind of condition the flange is, itself is in. Hopefully it's not bad and hopefully that's just the only leak cuz I can fix that real easy. If the flange is kind of out of whack, I'm going to just get it machined at this point cuz I already tried belt sanding them flat and it that didn't I mean, it did work on the one side, I guess, but, and it might have worked on this side. I'll just have to pull it and see. I, I don't know yet. But other than that, I did pull a plug and, you know, it's just black. Maximum recording time. What kind of phone is this? Anyway, I, um, I pulled it. It was black. And, and so I need to lean up the mixture on this thing a little bit. I have a calibration kit for the carburetor that I want to um, try you know, just rejetting or just calibrating the carburetor so that it's not pumping as much gas because it's super, super rich right now. So we'll see how that works out. Yeah, you can see pretty clearly that it was coming through this pipe right here. And um, if you shine a flashlight, let me see if I can get that going. If you shine a flashlight in behind it, you can kind of see... Can I even get an angle on that? Yeah, you can kind of see... The light coming through right there. Anyway, uh, I gotta. I'm gonna just re weld this section here, and uh, you know, hopefully that'll fix me up. Plugs and the plug wires came in today. Nice blue set of plug wires, and the plugs are the ones I was talking about. These are the shorter ones. So if you notice, like here's a length comparison for them. They're about, I don't know, maybe a half inch shorter, which should give me plenty of clearance for those headers. So I got to throw these on and, uh, and the plug wires <clears throat> kind of in a hurry today about this because, you know, the timing, the timing of everything is always terrible. And I got those plugs pulled already. That's the side that I pulled. The timing is perfect because today... The frickin' blazer broke down, and I let James the mod the silver turd so that he can get to work, but I gotta get that thing in the garage so we can fix it. Some kind of fuel problem.
just out here doing a little tuning on the truck got the got the new plugs in the new plug wires the plug they're they're beautiful it works really good let me zoom in on that back one there that was a problem you see that now the spark plug wire actually clears the header has some space there so won't interfere anymore it's running as good as I could I can I just set the uh, what they call on this carburetor the lean best idle set uh, so that it's idling uh, somewhere around 800 rpm you know it, it has a hard time actually sticking with a, a, it's not a smooth idle because well cams well cam I should say anyway this all looks good uh, in the engine compartment I'm really happy with the, the power and everything we took it for, for a test drive um, uh, after after getting this stuff in me and James and you know it worked great I, I it's got power all the way through it's feels good the only thing that was a problem was the drive shaft yep when you get to about 30 miles an hour this drive shaft just starts to put a, a little get a little uh, squirrely you know it, it's that um, it's that fix that I had to make to the drive shaft uh, it, it obviously is not going to work out for us. So I've got a new drive shaft coming in. It'll be here well, ah, at some point uh, soon, a few days. I got to swap this one out and put the new one in, and uh, we should be good to go. Yeah, right here, you can see the problem actually. Bonk, poked right through. It just it won't the 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 u the u bar the u joint won't stay on the uh, on the ear. It just it it won't stay in there. Like this side, it should be flat on that side. And you can see uh, actually the U joints come out of it right there, too. So, new drive shaft to pick that right up. This, this is not an eclipse. I'm sorry. But th this, there's no freaking way that this is an eclipse. What is this? What is this world coming to, James? I don't know. This is not an eclipse? It's not an eclipse. It makes me sad. There's, I, I don't even know how you can even think that. Nice. <laughs> this is side by side for you on the new drive shaft, rear drive shaft. It looks right. I wasn't, uh, you know, 100% sure until I could pull this out, you know, the the U-joints and everything look the same, and the yoke looked the same, pretty much, you know. <laughs> Just a, a glancing kind of look, it, it looked the same to me. So, but, uh, yeah, these look, this looks good, so I'm going to throw this in, it's not painted or anything like that. Um, this U-joint down here is fine, the one that was down on the other end was seized up when I got the drive shaft, so I put a new U-joint on that. And that's uh, it's in there. It's tight, but um, it's solid. It's clipped in and everything like it should be. And of course, James's rod blocking me. He's got his the uh, he's got his stealth in here because we got to pull that motor out. But I've got my my truck out in the driveway, and I'm uh, just working outside today. And as you can see, it's pretty freaking cold out here, in January. Big day today. First test. I've got the emissions test scheduled for, oh my god, it's so early in the morning. 8 a.m. as soon as they open up. So I'm up really early. But the truck is ready. I got the drive shaft is in. It works perfectly. I, I hope it passes. We'll see. No sticker for me today. Unfortunately, it failed. Right there is the reason why CO2 failed. It's nearly twice as high as it needs to be because it's running too rich. My uh, hydrocarbons failed too. That's because it's too rich. The NOx was fine. That was a half of what it needed to be. And uh, yeah, so... Uh, it failed. I need to, I need to adjust the carburetor. I have a kit for that. 
where did it go? Yeah, here, right here. I have a kit. This uh, I probably had this on the on a video before, but this uh, this um has all the jets and springs and all kinds of goodies to be able to tune my carburetor to um to I guess run at the right uh fuel level. So I have to start either messing around with this myself or take it to a dyno and you know get it dialed in right so i'm on the fence i'm not sure exactly how i want to run run that um so we'll see but it needs a little work before i'm going to get a sticker take two i'm at KS auto in fraser where's the sign there's the sign oh, i can barely read it there it is KS in fraser Waiting for my truck to get retested. Hopefully it'll pass this time. I've adjusted the carburetor as much as I can. And uh, I'm just crossing my fingers. I, I This should work. Let's see. Oh, she's on the dyno. Let's see if I can get a shot of this. Yeah, there she goes. This works. We'll see. Oh, here she comes rolling out right now. She's rolling out. And hopefully we'll see it. It's fucking passed. She's got a sticker. Oh, man. I can't even tell you how freaking happy I am about this. It's so good. It is so, so freaking good. Oh, here we go. Let's see if we can get it. Oh, there it is. Oh, I can't really see it. It's in there. I tr Trust me. It's on there. Oh, it's beautiful. It's fucking beautiful. There, there it is. Right there, baby. Nice. I'm stickered. Let's go get another one. Okay, before I go running off and getting my new sticker for my, uh, for my safety, I just wanted to kind of show off the the results here a little bit. So on the original test, I failed the carbon and uh, carbon monoxide and hydrocarbons. They were too high. That one was nine and a half, where it should have where the limit was five and a half, and then this one was eight fifty five, and the limit was five thirty seven. Now it, it passed with flying colors on the uh, nitrous oxide stuff, right? It was at thirty two hundred, where the limit was seventy three eighty. Well, on the new test. Look at this CO2 number. Check this out. Zero on the CO. Zero. Absolutely no carbon monoxide whatsoever coming out of it. That's amazing. Hydrocarbons, 74 out of 537 limit. Now, the nitrous oxides went up, but that's just because I think of other things, but mostly because I don't have an EGR valve. But look at that. Zero. I've tuned it so good that it has zero emissions on that thing isn't that crazy that's just crazy anyway i'm i'm just i'm just thrilled about it and tomorrow we're going uh, to um to see uh see if we can get the safety pass test or the safety test pass um taking it in and jane might be doing the inspection but maybe not i don't know one of them will here we go going into town for my for my inspection James is expecting me to be good. Well, we have an inspector. Start it up. It's gonna pull it in now. <laughs> what? She's on the lift. Look at that. Gorgeous rear end view. And it's just Oh man, I love this thing. That looks pretty good. I wish I had one of these at home, man. I swear to God, it could have saved me a ton of time. Oh my God, I got shit in here. Oh, she looks good. Home again. And I still have two stickers. One's my class two, one's my emissions. No safety failed for a hole in the cab that's right underneath here. Hello. Hi. How you doing? Good. It's right underneath here somewhere. 
Uh, I gotta dig up the carpet and weld some shit to get it to pass. So the saga continues. Almost there. So, so close. That's the only thing that's wrong with it, though. So, let's fix it up. Just gonna put a tail end on this video here, because, uh... It's getting a little bit long right now. I've got some work to do on the truck to get the safety sticker But you know, I'm just thrilled that I have the emission sticker right now That's my weight class sticker on there. It's a class two because it's like 6,000 pounds or something, but anyway uh, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna just kind of keep working on it I, I've got to tear the seats out to get under uh, to get the carpet out and all kinds of other stuff going on and the, another other, another thing that I need to do is like the drive shaft started leaking um towards the front here I'll show you where like it started leaking right here where it goes into the um tail end of the of the um uh, tr transfer case with that new drive shaft that I uh, bought. And I also noticed that the U-joint the that's on that drive shaft right now, the one that I didn't replace on, on the one that's on the truck, is uh, has a little play in it. So I'm gonna take this yoke off and just put it on the old drive shaft and also clean up the, I'm sorry, my new drive shaft. And I'm gonna put this yoke on the new drive shaft, clean it up, paint it, you know, get it all cleaned up. So I've got a couple things to do for the truck um, and I figured it's just like this video is already getting pretty long. So, uh, I'm getting stickers, man. I'm, I'm happy about it. This thing is, uh, kind of just basically road worthy at this point. And it's, uh, it's, it's exciting.